So the last autumn is a fun game mode, but some people seem to be having a lot of trouble with it. Well, no need to worry, since I will tell you not only how to beat the scenario, but also get the best ending. An ending with no deaths, no severe policies, and all upgrades to the generator. This is how you manage to get the I'll be home by Christmas achievement and the bonus Pata Familias achievement in Frostpunk. Before I start going over my strategy and build, it's probably best that I quickly summarize what makes the Last Autumn scenario special. As you may know, The Last Autumn is a game mode where you play as a supervisor of a new construction site, tasked with building a generator, just like the ones you use in the base game. Building this generator will take a lot of time, resources, effort, and it doesn't help that your higher-ups also expect you to be able to finish different parts of the generator by certain deadlines, meaning that if you don't manage to build it fast enough, your game will end quickly. But building a generator is complicated. Each step in the construction process requires special parts that need to be made in special facilities, and those parts are made from raw resources like wood, iron, and coal. Unlike the base game though, you can't just start mining iron or coal out of the ground, and there are no spots to place any wall drills. This means that you can only import these resources from shipyards that you construct, with an exception being wood, since you can cut down nearby trees with sawmills. There are two key issues with important resources though. First of all, you can only build at most four docks. Second of all, those docks can only bring the resources to you. You still need to collect them to put them in your stockpile. You can do this by hand or place a nearby gathering post, but if you want to be efficient about it, you'll want to have a reloader station. However, these reloader stations require steam cores to operate. Which brings us to another major difference about the scenario. You can actually import not only steam cores, but workers and engineers, but you can only import so much at a certain time, and each different resource costs more to import, with steam cores being the most expensive. Considering the fact that you also need steam cores to build other things for the generator, how you use your steam cores will be an important part of this scenario. Also, remember how I said you can only build four docks? Well, there's another building that takes up those exact same spots. Fishing docks. You will still need to feed your workers in this scenario, but you can't just build hunter's huts or greenhouses. In this scenario, you only have two sources of food, foraging teams and fishing docks. Chances are, you'll need to use both sources of food in this scenario, since it's important for what is the biggest change in this scenario compared to the base game. In the base game of Frostbunk, you have both hope and discontent as a mechanic, but in the last autumn, hope is replaced by motivation. Motivation represents the willingness of your workers to, well, work and complete the generator. What makes motivation different from hope, though, is that your level of motivation has a large effect in your work site. If your motivation is too low, all of your workplaces will incur a 30% efficiency penalty, and more importantly, if your motivation is high enough, all of them will gain a massive 30% efficiency bonus. This means that keeping motivation as high as possible throughout the scenario is extremely important. And that's about it. That's most of the things that make this scenario different from the base game. Just like in the base game though, it's important to understand how every single mechanic works with each other. So. Here is a quick graphic that shows you all the different interactions within the scenario, so you can get a better idea of how it all works. This graphic will be in the description by the way, just in case you want to take a better look at it. So now that we actually understand how the scenario works, we can get on to the actual guide. There are multiple different things we will have to focus on as the scenario progresses, and so I'm going to be splitting my guide up into three rough different parts, since what and how you play early on in the scenario will be very different from the end of it. So let's get started with the beginning. As soon as you pop into the game, you'll want to immediately start collecting the beginning stockpiles by building two gathering posts. You also want to immediately assign workers to the two wood stockpiles and onto one of those steel piles. As soon as you have enough resources, you'll want to immediately start placing two research buildings right around... Hold on a second. Now before I can move any further, we need to talk about how we're going to actually place all of our buildings. Since we can't place most buildings within the radius of the construction sites, we will have to be more precise about how or where we will place these buildings. So this is how I personally do it. 
I tend to place my first tent as close to the left of these trees right here, without making them disappear, and then place enough tents around the ring until I'm about to make more trees be wasted. From here, we have our general residential area, where we can place a church to cover as many tents as possible to have the most benefit from the passive motivation increase. To the right of these trees, we will be placing our two research buildings and any extra similarly sized buildings, like a forager's quarters or a cookhouse. Anyways, with that all out of the way, once you've placed your two research buildings, you'll want to immediately start researching sawmills, since you'll be very short on wood early on. Once the workday is over, place as many tents as you can. Chances are, you won't be able to house everyone on the first night, but that's actually a good thing, since you will receive an event where you can get some free motivation in exchange for just a couple sick people. From here, things become a little bit easier. You want to place and work a sawmill as soon as you unlock the tech, and afterwards, you'll want to start researching the docks tech and the forger's tech. Soon enough, the initial stockpiles the game gives you will dry up, and by that point, you'll want to have set up at least one dock with a gathering post in range of it in order to get supplies. So, by this point, you should have enough housing for everyone, a church to go alongside it, two sawmills working, one dock getting you whatever resource you need, aka steel, a hunting camp set up for your early food needs, and two workshops researching whatever you need. From here, things become pretty simple. You'll want to start getting as many workers as you can from the telegraph station, since your biggest limiting factor throughout most of this challenge will be a lack of manpower. You also want to actually start building the generator, so research these two techs before you start producing any profiles, and when you do start producing them, make sure to have 12 of them, 8 for the building, and 4 more in order to improve safety. Now when you start making the generator, you'll pretty quickly be introduced to one of the major mechanics of the scenario, safety. Safety is a very important mechanic, and if you decide to ignore it, injuries, delays, and deaths will quickly come to your construction site. Luckily, you'll quickly be introduced to a new series of laws that can increase the safety level at construction sites. But this is where things become really interesting, since there is a law that has absolutely nothing to do with safety, and it's called double shifts. Basically, what this law allows you to do is force a facility to work 24-7 just by throwing more men into it. This law is unironically the most powerful law I've ever seen in Frostpunk. This policy basically allows any facility to work 2.4 times more efficiently. The fact that you can reduce the number of men you put to work by taking the coordinated shifts law makes this mechanic absolutely broken. And since it's broken, we're gonna abuse the hell out of it. As soon as you unlock this law, immediately apply it to your workshops to be able to research 24 seven. And at any point of the game, when you're running low on any of the core resources, just pop this law into whatever building you need to gain it back super quickly. Putting that aside for a second though, once you start building the shaft structure for the generator, you want to make sure that the danger level is at most one. Any higher and you'll be struck by an event where your only two options is to lose a ton of construction progress or kill some of your workers in order to meet a deadline. After the event, you'll be forced to choose between the workers and the engineers. Pick the engineers as they give you a bonus to a building safety level at all times. Once you've finished building the shaft structure, congratulations! You've managed to make it through the early game. Right around the time that you finish the shaft structure, you should already have a foraging party going around scouting out the map. This is important, since you can get some free steam cores just by visiting a few locations. You should also have two docks, one for wood and another for steel, and you should start making preparations to build a third for coal. You should also have a fishing dock by this point, one that ideally has a 24 hour shift on it. Now if that all over with, you gotta make sure that you achieve three things in order to nail this part of the scenario. You need to drastically increase your steel production, you need to have two ventilation plants, and you also need to start getting some coal as well. So long as you do all of those things, the next few parts of this challenge becomes pretty easy. Just produce whatever materials are needed for the generator, and then start building it. When you start building the tower pumps, make sure to produce an extra five steam exchangers in order to improve the work safety level by one. Speaking of safety, from now on, whenever you build the tower pumps of the core, you'll want to make sure that you always have zero danger in order to get the best events from the inevitable workplace accidents. It's around this time that you'll get an event about another site having some problems, which will allow you to get 50 workers for free, and I would recommend accepting them into your construction site, since you will have a lot of manpower issues around about now, and those 50 workers are just the perfect number that can help out when it comes to those issues. Once you finish the core though, 
you won't actually have too much to worry about. You will no longer have to deal with toxic fumes, and you'll no longer get any special accident events, meaning that you'll no longer have to deal with having to keep safety levels as high as you used to. From here, you'll just want to start building the thermal halls, which you should be putting 24-hour shifts on, since they take a very long time to build. And here is a quick tip to make things speed up a little bit more at the end of the game. Produce the rare materials that you need to finish the research upgrades while you build the thermal hall. That way you can instantly research the upgrades as soon as you complete the generator. From here, things are pretty simple. Build the generator and finish the research and that's it. Congratulations! You should have finished the scenario before you got cut off from the mainland. But you might still be having some trouble with the scenario, so here's some quick tips specific to the scenario that you should probably keep in mind as you play. First of all, if you want to lose the least amount of motivation each day, you'll want to have the church, hearty meals, and prostitution laws all in effect, and make sure that every single worker lives nearby a church to gain motivation. There is actually one more law that you can use to increase motivation every single day, and that's cocaine pills, but I don't recommend it since if you use it, it will cause a death in your worksite, and removing cocaine pills will actually start causing motivation to drop even more than it did before. You can actually exploit the cocaine pills policy so it doesn't cause a death, but that requires a lot of micromanagement, so I don't recommend it at all. Secondly, make sure to save certain laws that increase the motivation later on in the game. A good example of that is the reparation of bodies law. Since you shouldn't be having any deaths in your worksite if you're playing correctly, you can just say this law later on in the game to get a massive increase in motivation. Thirdly, make sure that you're always one step ahead when it comes to steam cores. You'll need it in two out of three of your manufacturing plants, and you'll need it for ventilation plants and reloader stations. So, you'll need to send out a forging team early on to get enough steam cores, and remember to import a steam core every once in a while if you don't want to get delayed. Fourthly, make sure you actively check the progress and deadlines you have with the generator. It's a good indication of how well you're doing the game. Ideally, you would always be four days ahead of time, but generally speaking, being only two days ahead of time is still okay. If you find yourself starting to fall behind the deadlines, your run is probably screwed and you'll probably want to restart entirely. Fifthly, and finally, just like any other scenario, always keep two things in mind. Always keep expanding, and always have your main goal in mind. So long as you follow all these tips, you should probably have an easier time when it comes to the last autumn. So there you go. Um, I will be providing more in-depth details about the last autumn and my guides in the description if you want to read it. With that out of the way though, this is probably the end of the video, which means I should probably explain why I've been missing for close to four months. To put it simply, I've just been dealing with a lot of stuff. I've been having trouble thinking about ideas for videos that I'm actually genuinely happy with. A good example of that is the fact that I spent close to two months working on one video, only for me to think it's just bad and then scrap the entire video in the process. It wasn't a complete waste of time though. Like I, I learned a lot throughout the process and you know, looking back on it, I'm still glad that I did it, but it still doesn't really make me feel that much better about the situation. I've also been editing for other people recently, which also cuts into the amount of time I can dedicate to this YouTube channel. So yeah, I just I just haven't had enough time to 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 make videos recently. But I do plan to release more videos in the future. Although this is probably my last video on Frostpunk until they release the second game. So expect some different videos from me going forward. I might make some videos on Paradox Games slash Project Zomboid since I play those types of games a lot. Hell, maybe I'll even do another response video, or a video on cities, or transport, or god, who even knows, honestly. I'm still experimenting with this channel, and I hope that anyone who's still around listening to me talk will be willing to follow me and my random and honestly kind of mediocre YouTube journey. So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, not the most convincing talk there, but, uh, but that's all I've got for today. I sincerely hope that you guys all have a good day, and thanks for watching. I appreciate it.